could I play for a short while? Ring of Pain, Wingspan. Easy. What's the other one of these that I wanted to play? Hang on. I've lost it? Oh, have I lost it? by release date. Here we go. I really want to get Metal House in it. Like, super bad want to get Metal House. 20% off, but that's like still a little deceiving at the moment. I gotta get through Christmas. Um, Stacklands. Dungeons of Dreadrock. They're the three games are. So Brotato was one of them. 20 Minutes Till Dawn is the other one. And Vampire Survivors is the third. There you go. Play with Steam Overlay enabled. Interesting that that's disabled by default. And then... <laughs> so, does this not go full screen? It goes full screen window. Maximized window. I'll have to see if I can get. I need to see if I can get. Windowed Borderless mode. This game contains bright flashing lights. Please immediately stop playing and consult a doctor. Experience lightheadedness, altered vision, eye or face twitching, jerking, shaking arms or legs, disorientation, fusion, or momentary loss of. You or any of your relatives have a history of seizures or epilepsy. Consult a doctor. Put the audio out. Now I just need to put it in Borderless window. Is it dedicated full screen or actual good full screen? Twitch Connect? I got Twitch handle name to it. That just plugs in. I don't need to sign in. Twitch mode enabled.
So I went full screen. It is full screen borderless, but it is also not responding. So that's not full screen then. Nor is it capturing. Why is there an option? Full screen. Do I have to restart it? That's still a windowed mode. Okay. It's PC Game Wiki, I guess. PC Gaming Wiki Vampire Survivors. Because its own checkbox for full screen right now isn't working, let alone anything else. Oh, never mind. Look, it did it. Borderless full screen windowed, yes. Apparently that's what this is. Press the start. Do I need to manually capture it? Is this pseudo fake borderless full screen windowed? If I press spacebar, does it? Yes, it's pseudo fake borderless window. So I guess backup capture it is. Oh, amusing. Is that not even what? Not. This game just doesn't want to capture. Oh my word, what is the deal? What? Is this going to be the one I just wanted some chill, something nice and simple to end the day with? And this is going to be the one game in my entire collection, 20 odd years worth of games that I own, where it cannot capture for some odd reason. The game refuses to display. I've seen people stream the game. Work fine in OBS. Select the window instead of full subs. Focus on the drivers. The game cannot be captured with OBS or Discord if it runs with Steam Mobile enabled. Got it. It's my fault. I can fix that. Let's go back to regular. No idea why, but it simply doesn't work if window is selected as. Oh. So, the verdict. Apparently, window capture instead of game capture. I 
and this still isn't working. So, back to manual capture, vampire survival. And it did the stupid thing again. All right, well, we're not doing full screen then. If you can't handle full screen, we're not doing full screen. And it doesn't run. All right, at, at this point, we need a, something else. I'm over it. Something else, because this is stupid. Window capture works. What a stupid program. Like, that genuinely does sour me. When the base functionality of the program within an operating system can't be matched with the standard of the day, I'm a little sour to the program. All I ask for is windowed borderless mode. What, any- I mean, that couldn't even be matched, let alone capturing. So it auto walks. Does it auto walk? Hang on. Yes, it's reading input from my wheel. No option to disable joystick. Okay. Fires quickly in the face direction, orbits around the character. Fires one more project. Oh. This game has been on my tip playlist for some time. But... Having now checked it off the list, I can safely say it's probably not worth the trouble. High damage, higher scaling? Sure. Incoming damage by one increases re retaliatory damage by 10%. Let's take some Santa water. Base damage up by five. Sure. Isn't that a whip? Do I already have it? Oh, it's a whip upgrade? to heal. Do you heal on level? How much 
much memory do I have here? Like, how far can I walk before it forgets what I've done in other parts of the map? One more projector. A fire has one more projector. Reduces incoming damage. Is there no way to heal? I suppose it would be attached to an item if it was. Drop gems. Game. I mean, it is. I don't. <laughs> Thank you. 
I don't really know. Like, I don't have a lot to say. It's kind of exactly what I expected, and I... Uh, spinach? Armor? Yeah, armor would be okay. We've still got a lot of health here. Kind of just what I thought it would be. It's not a bad thing. Now that it's actually working, it's way less soured the mood. The verdict, or what I'd heard about this game, was that it was very much a game where you think nothing much of it, but you can't stop playing it. say the vibe so far is that it definitely feels like one of those games where you just accidentally play it for too long. I want to know how to get the spicy move again because that helped me clear out a lot of bad guys. I've seen a lot of people play this. Never actually touched a game myself. You can, so, whip attacks front and back. Fascinatingly. If you face forward, it attacks forward first. If you flip around like that, you can actually get both attacks on the same side. Tree got me. I want to go back and get all those gems though. Damage by 5 and area up. Damage inflicted by 10%? 10% could be more than 5 base. No, we're dealing with 15s and 20s here. The 5 flat would have been higher. The 10% should scale into the late game way better. Having it isn't terrible. We just upgrade the whip next time we get the chance. Oh! Uh oh. I thought walking into that did something different. King Bible, level 3. We'll go... that one. It's definitely got the vibe of something you keep playing for a very long time. for the invulnerability because I think it's inevitable we're going to start taking damage. Reducing it isn't the play here. Negating it is the play. Move speed definitely helping out here too. Oh! 
Oh, that's how you heal. Random chance drops from the otters. There's the flamey bit. Magic one cooldown. Apparently I've got 931 kills. And another Bible upgrade. I mean, it, it should definitely be a once-off. I don't think there's much more to gain from it. Maybe I'll go back and play it on my own time. But... That's a back. At least now I know how to heal. The range which the game remembers stuff you've done is pretty impressive too. Upgrade the whip. That's a hell of a thing to pick up. Can we got a chicken dinner. Thank you. This upgrades I'm not seeing because I haven't played enough or got many permanent purchases in maybe the, like there's the main menu purchases and stuff too. Which I think is what the gold is for. Oh, that's a scary bat. How do you beat the game? I know there's a way to beat the game. You just have to keep fighting. 20 minutes till dawn is survive 20 minutes. When it's dawn, you win. This one, I don't actually know the rules of, of um, victory. How to beat the game. Why has he got so much health? Oh. 
Uh-oh. Has the game just decided I've lost? I need my laurel. I got my laurel back just in time. backwards please okay gonna grab a knife my laurel back. Not much I could do there. Um, seven unlocks, apparently. Power up, Ah, that cost 5,000. A lot of stuff here that cost a lot, though. Grab magnet. Once more. Bombards in a circling zone. That's relative to me. Interesting. Have hit the bottom half of the screen. I'm assuming it's way more effective with larger crowds, too. what the blue thing does. Give me the blue thing. Oh! It drops a lot of stuff.
immediately. Give me wings, please. Now I need to be on the roll for a chicken. go. Character gains 8% more experience. mind be rolling. I don't want to put like 10 minutes into this run. It's already abysmal. I'm doing more running than I am doing farming. I don't want to just re-roll. But we're early into the game. I mean, the reason I want to re-roll is because I only wanted to do this last run. We're only level 5 at 4 minutes in. I feel like the only reason we're this alive, this far in and still alive, is because of the move speed. But I can't even get the gems at the moment. so far behind. chicken. Chicken!
Okay. does. the next wave bats. I want another one without that. The pigeon sucks. We're picking something else. Magic one was nice. I like that better than fire ones. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly what people say, right? It doesn't look impressive, but you just can't put it down. a descriptor right on the money. I'm sure there are some people out there that this just won't light up, but... A simple game. Simple elements. AoE thing again. Character picks up items from further away. I'm gonna take the whip though, that's so much better for early game clearing. Now we know we can heal. Go away! Too many bats! of the laurel there. Right. One more projectile.
does the whip do the same damage front and back? Laurel, Laurel cooldown. Lovely. It's an interesting mix of like remembering things you've made in the world and resetting a lot of enemies and things in the world as you leave the immediate area. Yep. Increase projectile speed. What is that? Wow, thank you. In Bible. So it's a Laurel upgrade. Yes. Laurel is saving my ass more than I probably give it credit for. I want the Atrob. waste the lore by running through but that is possibly an option if you have it upgraded enough what is that luck plus 10 Chicken. Double chicken. I don't think I had a lot left lying around. No. Still, it's nice to clean up the map. happening at the moment. Damage. 
But I would like the damage to be on the projectiles and not the whip. Any damage is good. DPS is definitely what I need, generally speaking. Whether or not it's on ranged or melee is irrelevant. Red Wall Husky, welcome back. I wanted to try this out before I ended stream. It's been on my to-do list and I don't often do things on my to-do list unless it's on stream, so I figured I'd have a quick game and find out what it was all about and it's positive in... what would you say, like a positive vibe? But it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. Which is a good thing, weirdly. Because it doesn't look like much. Uh oh. The gist and what everyone seems to agree with, and I am also in agreement, is that it's the kind of game that doesn't look like much, but you just can't put down. Seems pretty accurate. Since I've been playing for. I think over an hour now. The premise is insanely simple. Oh, just let me out. Too much to do with. Not enough damage to get through the crowd even. Oh, super massive health sponges. If I lose the ability to kill anything, I kind of lose the ability to level at all. I'm gonna use my Laura to get out here. There we go. Okay. Base damage by five or Laurel. Do I protect myself or get more damage? Actually, a decent question. Have I played Hero Siege? I have not actually heard of Hero Siege. Oh, that's a nice upgrade to the Bible. It might have just doubled up as a glitch because I got the upgrade. Possibly. Uh oh. Okay. Ellie. I need to find some chicken. Like Diablo, but pixelated. Classic Diablo or modern. What is that?
Not that easy to get rid of. Actually, there's another game I could stream someday. I finally bought Diablo 1. It's been on my GOG wishlist for a very long time, and I just caved and bought it when it was like $10 the other day. A mix of both. Honestly, I'm taking the best of both worlds isn't a bad thing. You just have to avoid taking the worst of the modern. I'm very... I am very old-fashioned. I do enjoy classic style games. Like, if you give me a pair of dice, I'm likely to have more fun than a, um, a, a die here, don't I? Oh, okay. Okay. Um. I'm taking fire ones, I guess. Chicken! Thank you. I'm very old-fashioned, though. If you give me a game that has dice rolls, I'm guaranteed to have more fun than most modern games. The literal example of that is Daggerfall, which I've been absolutely enjoying a lot of. And the combat, I mean, there's arguments to say it's a bit lacklustre because it is really just a stats game. Same with Fallout 1 and 2, you know, stat checks are very numbers based, you don't get a lot of saying in the, in the instance, but... I don't know why, I just enjoy those so- uh, not more, I just enjoy them way more than you would think, is probably how I'd phrase it. Dice roll games and a, giving me a pair of dice and telling me to go nuts? Because apparently I'm losing... Okay, this is it. This is it. Never mind. We got to level 17 for the final run. 14 minutes and just swarmed. I've never actually played D&D &D because I suck at doing cooperative storytelling. <clears throat> it's an odd one. I've never really been good. Even with homebrew stuff, I've done like... Okay, it, I shouldn't say I've never played D&D &D because I have. I've played homebrew and I've tried to help people make their own rule sets for like homebrew proper homebrew homebrew but I've never played like a like, like fifth edition D&D &D or anything like that because when I get put in a world and when people just stare at me and wait for me to say something I draw a blank if you give me a game like Fallout and you mod all the story out and you just give me a world to explore and interact with I'm a hundred percent there I just can't get to the- I can't write my own story. If I'm given all of that storytelling in a visual medium, I am a thousand percent on board with writing my own character, but I can't do it when people just stare at me expecting me to make stuff up. It's been the biggest deterrent to ever actually playing D&D properly, because every time I try, I get to the point where I have to ask someone to run me through a first-time scenario, and then they just never get back to me, so... But when it comes to games like Daggerfall, I mean, I've got an amazing character I put together in Daggerfall that is absolutely torturous. I gave the... it's an Argonian. <laughs> so, the character's arc is that it's an Argonian who was an aspiring mage, and their entire backstory when making the character is that they are an aspiring mage and were gifted a silver mace, and uh, not a mace, a stave, from the Emperor as part of the introductory sequence. I went through all of that, and then I had to pick their perks and buffs and debuffs, basically. I gave them the regular Argonian stuff, because um, Daggerfall doesn't have- it has minor presets, but it's all scaling, not actual unique status effects. So I gave them the usual Argonian stuff. Poison resist, disease, or was it poison immunity, disease resist, or the other way around. I went through and then gave them a bunch of negatives. Can't use um, 
can't use leather armor or cloth armor. And I just hand waved it. It's uncomfortable against the scales. And then I got rid of a certain type of weapon. No blunt. Um, no, it wasn't blunt because staves count as blunt. What was it? I think it was no swords or something silly. And I went through and I basically gutted all of my options for hand-to-hand -hand combat. And to top it all off, I gave the character a debuff that said incompetent with regular weapons. So even the ones they can use, they are like just abysmally poor at. My dice rolls on that Argonian when in hand-to-hand -hand combat, just oh, like you don't try. Fallout is kind. People say the 95% thing in Fallout 1 is brutal because you always roll that last 5% to miss. But trust me, that is so much better than Daggerfalls. Oh, you just have no chance to hit. <laughs> you, just, you get all this character put in, you get all these stats rolled out, and you'll just roll like a negative 40. It, like, it'll be a nat 10 that you roll, and all of your modifiers, you're just negative 40. You're never going to hit. Which is what I rolled with the Sargonium. Um, what I didn't realize, because I did want a bit of a challenge, that was the premise, was that I didn't want to have to resort to melee. The part I genuinely messed up was when I set up the Majory, I gave one times int into Majory, which means that your intelligence in print, which was about 80, um, is what you get in spellcasting. So I had barely like 100 points to cast spells, and your starting spells cost about 20. So... <laughs> so... Basically, my Argonian is trying desperately not to die in every scenario they're in. If they can get a non-combat scenario, it's like a blessing that they can get paid that day. <laughs> Let me have a look at this. Um, I don't have Steam overlay on this thing because this game captures terribly. It's a lot of fun, but... It's got those irks that I don't like. Capturing it in windowed mode instead of game capture. Not capturing at all if it's got Steam overlay, which I do use a bit religiously to be fair. Let's, Let's have a quick look. Siege. I want to look that up before I end stream. Never played either. Got into Elder Scrolls with Oblivion and Fallout with Fallout 3. I mean, you've only missed out if you can't tolerate the mechanics. I genuinely think Daggerfall, well, uh, Unity Daggerfall, if you can get um, Daggerfall Unity running, it is so much better having full screen capabilities and having um, Waterless windowed mode and all those other quality of life features we get nowadays, especially if you run more than one monitor. And the GOG edition comes with a lot of mods pre-packed. You can turn a lot of them off, some of them are a bit weird. Um, there's one that gives you like an Elder Scrolls Online mechanic, which I don't think even has an effect in the world, it's just go collect sky shards. There's a couple of others that do change a bit of the game around, but if you just want, like, if you do want the authentic experience, a safe bet, you can turn everything off except the Dream Texture Pack, basically. Although, I will say, the hilly, the, the advanced landscapes, gorgeous when you can get that running. I had a bit of a problem with advanced landscapes dropping me through the planet. And I just kept falling indefinitely when I first started the game up. I don't remember how I fixed it, but I think it was something to do with advanced landscapes combined with like dungeon exteriors was buggering bugging out. And if you're into CRPGs, I think Fallout 1 and 2 actually still stand the test of time. 
the format hasn't changed. You can play modern day CRPGs. Um, what is the, what's the new one that came out? Tormented? Or, t um, Paradox released it, published it. It's not Tormented. No, that's the old one. Escape Torment was the one I was thinking of. What's the oh. Retchery? We're just gonna have to find another Paradox game. I, if I know a Paradox game, I've got categories for everything. So I'm track it down. Tyranny! Tyranny was a CRPG that came out recently. The platform hasn't changed. If you like those top-down click adventure games, Fallout 1 and 2 still hold up to this day. It's very dice rolly though. So, and I, I do admit a couple of the mechanics aren't that intuitive. There's a there's a skill menu you actually have to open. So if you want to lockpick something, you actually open the skill menu, you click lockpick, then you click the thing you want to lockpick. It's a little extra step mechanically like that, but it's still, I think, does fairly well for a game released in 95. Um, Daggerfall is a bit more difficult to get into though because that takes a lot of your expectations of open world RPGs and just doesn't have any of them. When I first got into Daggerfall I thought I could go collect herbs, I thought the open world was a place to explore, and I thought all of that open land between towns was just a gold mine of content. No. Um, Daggerfall's open world is there for spectacle only, released in an age where that sort of spectacle sold copies. And from that frame point of view, it is impressive. From the point of view of Oblivion, where you actually can physically walk from Leowin to Breville, it's, it's not the same. Daggerfall doesn't let you do that. You will actually be spending an hour walking between towns. It's a one-to-one -one scale map. The game is designed, and the physical distance does actually play a part mechanically. You just don't ever physically walk it. The, me the part it plays is grounding the time it takes to travel between places, because all of your quests are basically timed. You have 10 days to do this and get back to the person. You have 6 days to rescue a hostage before they're gone for good. So what? 30 days before a, a you know, some kind of criminal is gone from a den of thieves. It's a lot of framing around time. Even the main quest, I'm not kidding, one of the main quest points early on is that you can get an extra bit of help regarding how to deal with the main quest, but you only have 30 days to get to the tavern. When it takes you a single day between the closest of two towns, especially if you're camping out and traveling carefully, you know, small, single, couple of hour long trip turns into something where you end up spending the whole day camping in a tavern, waiting for the gates to open in the morning. If you rush there recklessly, there's a chance that you'll get there after dark and the city gates will be closed. Those sorts of things play a part, and the physical distance of the world is the spectacle that grounds that mechanic. So when you travel all the way across, I actually, you know what, I have a map here. Daggerfall map explain. There it is. So the Daggerfall map up in the top corner, you have three kingdoms. The kingdom of Wayrest, um, the kingdom of Blackrock, or Hammerfell, and you've got the kingdom of Glenumbra. It's Daggerfall. But you start off in Daggerfall. Um, you get the tutorial dungeon, which is brutal. The tutorial dungeon is not nice. It's a very, very mean teacher, uh, but it does give you the, you know, it gives you the pop-up saying, this is how you do this, this is how you do this, and then just throws you into the deep end at level one when you don't know what you're doing or how to do things. But the difference, again, another different mindset with the tutorial dungeon in Daggerfall, usually, again, in Oblivion, you go into a dungeon to clear it out. You're the hero of Kavach, you know, you're the you're the grand champion of the arena. Why would you go into a dungeon and run for your life? But there are so many times in Daggerfall where there's just stuff you can't do. 
you just cannot do it. A good example is one of the quests I have on my main character, the Argonian, is to go and track down a Dramora. It's a date. It's not a. It's not a Daedra. It's a Dramora, the humanoid version. I got there, and none of my weapons or spells could actually touch him. He was just flat immune to every single damage type I had. I cannot touch him, and I don't know what I need to do to be able to even go back in there and be something formidable against him. It's interesting because I remember that quest being pretty important. I don't remember who gave it to me. I don't think it was main quest line. But it, well, it could end up being main quest line. Oh, I'll, I'll phrase it like that because it's a Daedric artifact he has. Um, but yeah, so you've got the entire map there. Arguably, up until Elder Scrolls Online, it was. You know, actually, to scale, it still is because Daggerfall's scale is one to one. Almost, I, you know, almost, I would say, one to one. It takes you a couple of hours to walk even from the starter dungeon or the starter town to your next town in the road. Following the road, it'll take you about 40 minutes, half hour to 40 minutes. It's massive. And then you have to... Yeah, it, it's... I love that sort of stuff, though. That, uh, that minor attention to detail where you have to consider how you're doing engaging with the game. It's one of the reasons I actually do enjoy Fallout 4's survival mode a lot more than a lot of other open world RPGs. It, it, there's a lot of elements that are introduced and there's a lot of RPG elements that are removed that turn it into more of a survival shooter. But that's where I think it's strongest. It's, I mean, I, again, for what it's worth, it's an average Fallout game, but it's a great open world survival horror. Horror, quote, quote. When the damage tables are so extreme as survival modes are, and when you don't get any bonus health from leveling up from endurance stat, it becomes a game of, like, do you actually take the fight at all? It's no longer, I'll clear out the bandit camp so I can get paid. It's suddenly, there's seven bandits in there, and I know two of them have molotovs, and there's three turrets over there. How can I strategically avoid combat for as long as possible so that I don't get Molotov to death in a single go? Anyway, I was looking up, give me a sec, get rid of the dagger for map explain. Where did I put my play? Uh. Can I not capture that? Capture this? Yes. Let's have a look. What was it called? Hero Siege. Obligatory steam powered. Oh, of course. I'll look it up later. I forget I have that silly thing. Ooh. Why did that not copy page? Come on! Nico. Oh, that backfired. <laughs> Have you ever considered doing a playthrough of each of the videos on YouTube? I do have a VOD archive, and my VODs get a little out of hand. <clears throat> Case in point, 10 seconds from now will be at 10 hours, but... Happy 10 hour mark! Woohoo! So, I normally split my VODs into categories. So today we had three categories, um, but I'll get four VODs. The first is Valheim co-op run, the second was the Valheim Sunday run, and then we did a bit of deep rock and we ended on Vampire Survivors. This bit probably won't make it to YouTube because it's just daughter. But I split them into each category so that I can then make playlists out of them because it was very awkward 
The first handful of VODs I put on YouTube didn't split up, they were just uploaded as is. And the downside of that is that there's a couple of VODs super early on in the YouTube life, in the VOD channel's life, where they just have 17 hours, or YouTube cuts up at 12, so it'll be like 6 hours and 6 hours between two VODs, and there's no organization. It's like the first three hours of VOD will be one game. The next seven hours split between the two VODs in the middle will be a different game. I've, I split them up now. It's a better format, but it just means that there's a lot more stuff going up. If I play it on stream, it will be on the VOD channel. I don't know if I'll ever get a proper edited down version because when it comes to open world RPGs, I get lost. I will just me. I will... I'll potter around. I do housework. That's how I describe a lot of these games. Is I would just end up tending gardens, building fences and houses. When you take those elements out of the game, I normally try. But when you let me build stuff like in Fallout 4, or let me garden and edit and customize and everything, that's my absolute go to. Fallout 4 is a little different because I actually do have to go grocery shopping though. With survival mode enabled, I run out of food, which is one of the most fascinating things I've ever had to do, is work to eat in a video game. Like, I have to go down to Diamond City, and they have a butcher, and I buy all the cheap ass meat from the butcher. Do you know how damn expensive that the butcher stuff is in Diamond City? You can't buy bloatfly meat for less than 10 caps. It's insane. You get paid, like, maybe 100 caps for doing a quest. Most of it goes to buying blowfly meat. Not, oh good, don't even get me started on the bloody ramen noodles in the center of town. They're a ripoff. When you're back, when you're actually buying money to keep your character fed and using food for healing as well, like it's a damn expense. It's a, it's a, and again, it's one of those things too, especially in Fallout 4 with survival mode, you can't fast travel. On top of not being able to fast travel in Fallout 4 survival mode, you can't save. So there's no save scumming, and you can't jump to destination. So there's like an extra, that alone is like, oh, you know, I have to go travel from Diamond City to Sanctuary in the north, you know, it's like, oh, that's a half hour jog. But on top of that, you then have to think about not only healing and meds, you also then have to factor in whether or not you get hungry or thirsty on the way there what supplies you have at the destination, whether or not you can grab anything, or if you need to give yourself supplies for the trip there and the trip back. Like, you actually have to ration your own supply. That's why it costs so damn much to feed your character in that game. Because when you have to travel for half an hour, it becomes three stakes. That's a lot of money. Or you end up making your own... Um, you can make your own stuff too. But I digress, I've gone on a huge tangent. I do upload my stuff to YouTube, but it's in VOD format. So it's the whole uncut VOD, split by category. Might be Hero Siege, there is Cartoon Blood. Oh no, this is my family view. So this thing here, I can turn it off, turn it back on. Um, I do family sharing with a couple of people. And my paranoia just says, in case I forget to log out, if I have family sharing, like that family lock stops them posting as me, buying things with my credit card, going on to any, like I, they can't type to friends, they, it just locks the account down. It's an extra bit of arguably needless security, because I'm already pretty conscious about security, but it's that extra step. That just means even if someone gets access to my account, they need that one extra password to gain access to all of the online features. They can play any game on my library. The library's not locked. You can access all of that, but not the rest of the account. Either way, I think we need to find someone to read out to. And I think someone has already gone offline. Dark Raiden? Would be my next go-to. She's probably torturing herself with two 12 plus hour streams in a row. But it's not without cause. Correction, Dark Raiden is offline. Tone is online. I got it backwards. It's not without cause though. 
Doc Red is um asking for a bit of help at the moment. The charity stream for Dark Raiden. I would be going there if I could, but she's not streaming at the moment. So, a long time in the making, Bambi Cakes has moved states. And she is right now streaming for the first time in three months. It has been a long time since I've seen Bambi online. Last I saw, she was playing Red Dead Redemption. But today, we're going to go back to Valheim. I think that's a good place to end on. She's been going for two and a half hours. And she's just a lovely person to be with. Solar Spot Gaming, I think, is her partner. I know she has a partner. I just need to be more confident I got the name right. But we're going to go raid out. And I'm going to go get something for food. And be if you want global emotes, we have some gorgeous global emotes. We also have some fancy animated emotes. Or, if you've been lurking for 100 channel points, you can buy any regular emote from the channel and take it with you for the next 24 hours. I am really proud of some of my emotes. I think they're pretty decent, but the gorgeous face there has to be my pick. If you're going to take any emote with you, you've got a gorgeous face. We've got an amazing, what is it, Fishba? I think it's the one I've got on Better Twitch TV. Either way, pick your message, pick your poison. I'm going to take the one with the bouncing bird in the middle because I absolutely love that one. And we're going to go say hello to Bambi. Feel free to, I absolutely give her a warm welcome back for Twitch too because it has been a long time since she's been live. I'll see you all over there. There's uh, one subject we haven't touched on yet, and it's one that you're supposed to be quite famous for. Uh, you wouldn't need birds, would you? Anything interesting to tell us about birds?